This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work with another response to an Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. And in this case, the question comes from Jesse Saranow. And I chose to answer this one uh, among the many that we get because it reflects and is similar to other questions. And so I hope I can respond uh, to many of you at the same time. Here's the basic question. Granted that a transition from capitalistic hierarchical enterprise structures to worker co-ops as a more democratic, a more just arrangement, if we have individual enterprises, for example, owned by the workers who both work in and run them, wouldn't those enterprises be caught up in the competitive capitalist market system and end up acting not all that differently from the way capitalist enterprises do? I want to respond to this because I think there is an analytical issue here of importance as well as a political one. Here's the analytical issue. This has to do with whether profits occur or produced in the act of exchange in markets or inside the enterprise. My conviction and that of many economists is that profit doesn't happen in the market. That's where money is made, that's where you get your revenue, but that's not where the profit comes. Let me explain. In a capitalist enterprise, the workers produce by their labor, their use of their brains and muscle. They add more value to whatever it is the capitalist sells than it costs the capitalist to pay them. And that's where the profit lies. You get more out of your worker than you pay him or her. And if that becomes untrue, if what you pay the worker is more than the extra benefit you get from whatever that worker contributes, that's when you fire the worker. You don't have them anymore. You're not doing each other a favor. You're signing a contract. The worker wants the wage and gets it. The employer wants the fruits of the worker's labor and gets it. But the employer wants something more. He wants the fruits of that worker's labor to be worth more to him as an employer than it costs to hire the worker because otherwise he's not going to hire the worker. Profit occurs in the enterprise during and by virtue of production. The capitalist then sells the goods at their value, at the price that he gets in the market. That price is sometimes higher, sometimes lower. All the the capitalist needs is to get the value, or more, that would be nice, but at least the value of the output, what it's worth, because then he captures that difference between what the worker adds when he works and what you pay him. And therefore, it's not in exchange, it's not in markets that profits are made. It's in the capitalist system, in the enterprise. So now shift your focus to a worker co-op. There, too, the workers add more, each of them, by their labor than they take out of the enterprise for their wages. But notice my words. The workers take out of their own output the portion for themselves. They don't give over the difference. That is the excess of what they add compared to the wage they get. They don't turn that over to somebody else. That's capitalism. They turn it over to the employers. But in a worker co-op, they turn it over to themselves. What they don't take as workers, that excess, is the profit of the enterprise that all the workers together will now decide what to do with. Notice the crucial difference is who gets that surplus, that difference between what a worker adds by his or her labor relative to what they get paid in a capitalist system 
or give themselves in a worker co-op system. So I'm not too worried that you're going to undo the benefits of worker co-ops if you have a market where workers exchange the fruits of their labor. The big differences will come because you have rearranged the enterprise. There is no longer going to be a small group of people at the top who run the enterprise for them because they're the ones in charge. Now the ones in charge are everybody. One person, one vote. That's the rule of a worker co-op. So the workers together produce an excess of output over what they take back as their own income, and then they together decide what to do with that excess. That's what a democratized workplace means. Well, will they use markets? Will they exchange what one worker co-op produces for what another one does by having the first one sell it for money, what they produce, then use the money to buy the output of the second. That's an open question in worker co-op economies. They may or they may not. My guess is we'll see a mixed system. That's what we see in capitalism. There are some things that you buy from a capitalist enterprise that sells it to you. And that's how we arrange it. But there are other cases where we don't. For example, there is an enterprise that produces and maintains, for example, Central Park, a beautiful park in the middle of Manhattan in New York City. But you do not pay for access to the park. You do not, for example, give them X dollars and get two hours in that part of the park. It doesn't work that way. That's not the way the community of New York wants to produce and consume park experience, picnics, strolls, weddings, whatever happens in the park. Here's how it's done. We all pay. In the case of Central Park, it's actually by donations. There are donations given by people who live in New York to something called the Central Park Conservancy. It also gets money out of taxes from the city of New York, and it maintains the park. And anyone, New Yorker, not New Yorker, U.S. citizen, not U.S. citizen, can go into that park and take advantage of the benches and the park lanes and the ponds and the ducks and the things to visit for free. You enter the park, you use the park. It's a, That's a way of distributing a park to a consumer, but it doesn't use the market. And there are many things where it might be much better not to use the market. And a worker co-op system, whose very essence is democracy, will decide democratically what is going to be distributed as a free good, like we distribute the park, or we distribute the beach, that's a public beach, or we distribute anything else publicly, and what will be done in a quid pro quo, I give you this, you give me that, market type of exchange. And here's one thing you can be sure of. Capitalists arranged for markets, which existed long before capitalism. Capitalists arranged for markets to work in just the way that reinforces capitalism. And worker co-ops will also regulate and shape markets so that they reproduce worker co-ops. There's not a problem in doing that. That's the history of economic systems. This is Richard Wolf responding to another Patreon question of Ask Prof. Wolf.